This is Playmaker Tutorial 22 and Blender Part 8. We've set up Blender now in such a way that we can really get going on 3D modeling. I'm interested particularly in creating the cage around which we can build this. I'm going to leave uh, Layer 4 enabled for a little while just because I find it quite easy to get confused when you're starting from scratch, starting a new layer. It helps to have an existing version of the plane there just so that you when you're switching from side to top to front views that you're in the right view when you're working in the scene. So the way I'm going to do this may seem very unconventional to you. This approach I think will yield the best results. I will go ahead and tab into edit mode on this plane, hit A for deselect all, and then hit B for border select and drag across these two vertices. Now, before I change the viewing angle to show you what's going on, I'm going to snap the cursor to the selection. And I do that with Shift S and go Snap Cursor to Selection. Now the 3D cursor is sitting between two vertices, of which we only are seeing one because we are uh, looking at it from the top. Now, if I hit C, I'm guaranteeing that the middle of the page is that 3D cursor. Now I'm going to show you around a little bit as soon as I press the middle mouse button to pan around, we're seeing better what's going on here. I selected with a border select both the top and the bottom vertex of this fuselage, and I placed the cursor on the selection, which means that Blender will automatically find the midpoint between these two points and will place the cursor there. Now that we've got the cursor positioned, I can tab out of this fuselage because I want to add a different object. This is going to be the object I'm going to work on next. It's going to be the cockpit object. I'm going to leave the fuselage object around just for reference purposes for a little while. But first of all, let's look at the geometry that we see here. This here is very close to a circle, or a semicircle at least. And so is this. Now, the real challenge in creating a very high detail and accurate cockpit is blending the geometry of this rounded fuselage, when you look at it from the front, with the geometry of this windscreen here. So what I'm going to start by is I'm going to create the top view of the windscreen geometry and we're going to turn it sideways and work on it inside view. So hit spacebar to add a mesh and I'm going to add a circle. And the circle is going to default to have 32 vertices. I like putting it on 36 vertices because 360 degrees is a whole circle. So if you have it at 36 vertices, that means every 10 degrees you have a vertex. And that is really a lot easier to work with when you want to do accurate rotations and those kinds of things. So I go like this. And now I have a circle here that almost lines up perfectly with the outline of the cockpit. Now notice there's a thickness to this gray outline of the cockpit. We are actually going to model this so that it looks like a picture I found on the internet. So this is what I'm going to use as a visual reference to complement the view I have more in a technical outline uh, on the background image here. So I'm going to start by matching the circle to the innermost radius here on the background image. So I hit S for resize and I hit X to constrain it to the X axis and then I uh, lower the, uh, the radius a little bit. And I'm noticing something here already that is a little bit disconcerting, but I can, I can deal with it. The image is not quite mirroring itself properly. So it could either be that I didn't place the background image properly, or whatever the case may be, I can compensate for that a little bit, just simply by tabbing out of edit mode and moving it over a little bit. But I do want to be careful. I want to keep it centered with the actual original when all is said and done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the circle around by 10 degrees so that there's vertices at the extremes of the dimensions of the circle on top and both sides and at the bottom. Well, we're going to delete all this. There's a reason I'm doing this. I want to mirror the geometry of the circle so that we don't have to model both sides. So I'm going to erase what's not needed at the bottom here. I'm going to erase these vertices that make up the, the other side. And I'm going to tab out of edit mode in order to assign a modifier to this object. Now notice the object is now only a semicircle with this part as a radius. And if I add a modifier to it, I can say mirror. It's going to mirror it on the other side. And so whatever I do to this side, that's what's going to happen to the other side as well. That saves me a ton of work. Okay, so now that we've ha we have that infrastructure set up, let's go ahead and place the circle more accurately around this semicircle. 
what I need to do next is I need to snap this cursor back onto the object so that I'm sure that I'm using this cursor as the reference point. So I go Shift S again and I say snap cursor to selection. Alright, so we're back on track with that. Now I'm going to tab back into edit mode and at this point I need to introduce you to another very important concept in Blender and that is determining where the center of the edits are that you're making to these points. Let me illustrate. If I activate the rotation just for the sake of showing you, uh, you see how that line uh, the radius of this rotation is right where this dotted line ends, right around where my cursor is right now. Okay, so that's fine and dandy. Let me escape out of this. But what if I want it to rotate around the center of the object or this cursor? Well, fortunately, we have several options here. If I want it to revolve around the 3D cursor, I can enable that here. Now when I hit rotate, it's going to use the 3D cursor as the uh, radius of rotation. And it's also going to use the 3D cursor as the center for the resize. Notice how when I pull it together, it's going to pull itself into the center of the 3D cursor when I have it constrained to the x-axis. And that is what I wanted. Uh, I just wanted to resize the cockpit object a little bit again because when we moved it over, this overstepped the boundaries uh, of the cockpit object. Now I want to move this vertex in line with what I see on the background image. And I'm going to continue forming the cockpit according to the background image. I hit E for extrude. Extrusions are very common in Blender, so this is the first time I'm introducing you to it. And an extrusion is quite simply taking one vertex, making a copy of it, and pulling it so that it creates a face or an edge in this case, along which you can make your object. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another circle so that when we have the second circle, it'll make up the radius that we see on the outer edge. This is just my way of making it uh, precise because I know that Blender lays down very precise uh, semicircles. Okay, so I add another circle. I'm with 36 vertices again. And notice how, remember the last one we did, we had to rotate it. And the last one we did, we also had to delete one side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the border select and click on the middle mouse button to deselect the ones that I want to keep and then I can erase with X all the other ones. So now I can hit the L key in order to select the ones that are left over and I can move them by 10 degrees so that the vertices line up here in the middle. Now I can push this whole thing forward and it's going to pretty much line up to the geometry of the background there. So I know that I have to resize it outward a little bit along the x-axis, so I hit S and X. And now the goal is to fine-tune the details until they match up with the previous geometry we had here. So basically I'm going to delete this. Now I want to connect this vertex to this vertex here. How do I do that? Well, I start by selecting this vertex, and then I shift-select the second vertex. Remember, selection is always done with the right mouse button in Blender. And then I hit the Option M key. This will give me the Merge dialog. So it gives me a whole list of options here of what I can do with these two vertices. Merge at last. It's going to identify the last vertex that you selected, and it's going to merge the first one at that last vertex. So now I've created a loop that will result in the cockpit. Now all I have to do is move the rest of the vertices into place in order to have the uh, cockpit object accurately represented in 3D, what we have in 2D. So all I'm doing is moving it around a little bit, constraining my movements to the x-axis. It may not be necessary, but I'm just doing it for the sake of maintaining the, the geometry that I was interested in. Now originally, I wanted to get to this point in this tutorial, where we have the 3D cockpit object, or at least the windshield, lined up in top view, in side view, and in front view and you can see the 3D-ness of it when I pan around like this. And then this would be the object that we would use to create the panel and the interior around, as well as the rest of the rounded fuselage. Unfortunately, I ran out of time in this tutorial. I'm trying to keep them to 10 minutes each so that I can post them on YouTube, but I, have to, I had to split this tutorial, and I'm going to have to continue on in the next tutorial on this series. So thanks for your patience, and I hope you find this helpful in some way or other. Again, if there's any questions you have or any discussions, go to the forums on explain.org and you will find people discussing this stuff and hopefully you'll find answers there too.
Thanks.